does have a weapon a round in it well a magazine it's armed okay go ahead and take this apart so I can show you what it looks like in the inside See if I can get this right with the gloves. Okay. Well. That's with oil. That's with COP. I removed all of the uh TW25 grease that was here and on the barrel in the cutout area and I put a COP break free on there right before I went to the range I put COP here it's not bad I mean it's it's not as bad as if the grease was on there but it did jam more Believe it or not, it, it jammed more than when the when I had the grease on there. For every magazine, it jammed on the average of once. In one magazine, it jammed twice. But uh, once again, it only jammed on the uh, when I was using the Remington UMC uh, flat nose. In fact. See, here's all the boxes I fired. I fired a half of this. I wrote notes on the tab here as I was as I expended the boxes. So no failure to return the batteries with that ammo. This is Gecko. Gecko full metal jacket. Hardball. Um 124 grain. A box of American Eagle 124 grain. No failures to return the battery. Okay. Save those notes here. So I had two failures to return the battery with this box. Um, the third magazine and the fourth magazine so I got through two magazines before it started acting up and then on the fifth magazine there was a failure to return the battery and then on the sixth magazine there were two failures to return the battery so there were five failures to return the battery out of 150, 175 rounds, approximately. And I also had a problem with one of the rounds here. Let me see if I can find it. I left it in the box. Here it is. I'm not sure if the camera picks that up. Look at the brass at the end. And I'm thinking that this is this might be what's causing all of the uh, failures to return the battery. For every failure to return the battery, I stopped what I was doing it and I popped out the round. Popped out the round, popped out the magazine. And took a look at every one of these. The other ones looked okay, but this one looked kind of bad. So it makes me wonder if, and, and again, it was all the Remington UMC. So I'm wondering if this doesn't, this gun doesn't like the UMC, or there's something funky going on with the UMC that, that you know, that might be the reason why it's choking on it. Remember. <clears throat> 
when I went to the round uh, the range last, I had two failures to return the battery. I noticed that it it was all UMC, and I did not uh look at the rounds. I did not you know eject a round that was in the chamber to take a look at it. I will be doing that from now on, but I I tell you what, as soon as these are gone, I probably won't use them anymore. The only reason I used them. The only reason I bought them was because I wanted a uh, something to simulate it, to simulate jacketed uh, hollow points, and flat nose does. It gives you that. I mean, it, it's it's chopped off at the nose to simulate jacketed hollow points. It's a good way to test your gun to see uh, if it'll have problem with uh, JHP. But anyways, let's look back at this barrel here. That's not as bad as the last time I got video footage of this. That's nasty. All the oil, I, 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 I lightly coated this area. And let's use the recoil spring now. I lightly coated this area here. I lightly coated that. And I lightly coated this area. From here to here. That whole area. This very light coating of uh, CLP. Um, and one, two, three, 150, 150, almost 200 rounds. I got five uh, failures to return the battery. That's, that's more than I want. But... For this gun, if I had to use it in a defensive situation and it did that, uh, the, the thing about these failures to return the batteries are, here's what happens. Uh, sometimes when I'm at the range and it, there's a failure to return the battery, half the time I don't even know because I'm looking at the sights. I'm sighted down and <clears throat> I, I can't always tell that the slide's all the way forward because my vision is, you know, I use corrective lenses. So uh, a lot of times I'll notice it when I pull the trigger and I get a click. And when it when it does that, that's when it's it it finishes going fully forward. But what it does is it resets the trigger in the DA mode. So uh, that second strike capability kicks in. And uh, I'll, I'll never be fully hampered with this gun. Um, it just means I have to practice with DA. Um, or I know for a fact I'm not going to be using this uh, in defensive situations. It hasn't choked on anything else. The Winchester White Box JHP Personal Protection that I used last uh, the last range visit, it didn't choke on any of that. It didn't choke on uh, Tula, believe it or not, 100 rounds of Tula. Um, it only choked on Remington UMC and only two of them. So I probably put, uh, I want to say 650 rounds. I've only had five, seven failures to return the battery. That's not bad. In my opinion. And it's all this. Every single bit of it. So I have some cleaning to do. And I think I might continue to use CLP to lube this instead of uh, grease. I will continue to use grease on the, uh, on the rails. There's no reason for me not to do that. Um, I want the grease to stay put. I don't want it spattering everywhere. If you notice all this oil here. I did not put any oil anywhere in here. That's all CLP spattering from where I put it here and here. And I did not put a lot. So you can see how that migrates. That's why I don't like using CLP as lube. But anyways, we're done.
Okay, let me put on my natural gloves.